If the current UAP phenomena is indeed the result of visitors from other star systems, then they have overcome some significant barriers to reach our planet in the first place. It's not just a matter of enormous distances, although the distances between stars is significant in and of itself, but it's also the question of navigating between those stars. Unless extraterrestrial visitors are traveling at a fairly low speed, that is to say a few percent of the speed of light, and are therefore taking centuries between departing and arriving at our planet, which is possible but not very practical, then they are being confronted with a whole new challenge in trying to navigate between the stars. And that is the problem of near light speed travel. Now, traveling beyond the speed of light, at least as far as we know, is an impossibility. And assuming that warp drives, wormholes, things like that are also impossible, which at the moment they seem to be, at least from a practical standpoint, then traveling very close to the speed of light is the only solution for traveling between the stars. But with the assistance of time dilation, this can certainly reduce the amount of time that passes for the passengers on on these ships, but it also creates a unique problem. Because, as the legendary Carl Sagan put it, funny things start to happen when you travel close to the speed of light. And the most significant of these things is a light speed Doppler effect, whereby all of the blue shifted and red shifted stars from the traveler's point of view get compacted into a halo at the front of the ship. In other words, your ships are surrounded by utter blackness, and then the only thing you can see, and the only thing your instruments can perceive, is a halo ring of red stars, red shifted stars that is, in an outer ring, and blue shifted stars in an inner ring all ahead of your ship, even though the red shifted stars are actually behind you. How can you possibly navigate when your perception of reality is that significantly skewed? That's going to be a serious problem for any explorers who dare to travel close to the speed of light, which once again is probably the only practical way that we can travel between the stars in a reasonable time frame. So what is the solution to all of this? Because even instruments would be affected by these sorts of things, and it would be very difficult to adjust your navigational systems to perceive reality appropriately given how skewed that reality suddenly was. Well, one of the most significant and useful tools that could make navigating even under these difficult circumstances a lot more straightforward are millisecond pulsars, or pulsars of any kind, but millisecond pulsars are particularly useful. And interestingly enough, millisecond pulsars happen to occur at very convenient locations in our galaxy, allowing for far easier navigation navigation than random chance would suggest. In other words, these pulsars are perfectly positioned to make navigating through our galaxy utilizing near light speed travel a much easier prospect. And if this is done by design, how did alien civilizations actually manage to either create or move these incredibly useful objects to these locations? Well, interestingly enough, an astronomer has not only theorized as to how this could be done by an advanced civilization, but he also believes that we may have observed alien civilizations carrying out this monumental task right in front of our telescopes. <laughs> On August 18th, 2023, I released a video entitled UFO Navigation. New studies suggest that pulsars are actually alien technology. And in that video, I quoted extensively from two peer-reviewed scientific papers describing why pulsars may indeed be the product of alien technology or perhaps an argument for aliens modifying or tweaking pulsars to make them more useful navigation navigational aids. And in those papers, which by the way I'm going to have linked in the description and I'll link the video at the end of this video, 
a number of details about millisecond pulsars in particular were revealed. There is, for example, an arrow-shaped constellation of these pulsars, comprising actually of 12% of the known millisecond pulsars in the galaxy terminating at the center of the galaxy, or the galactic center radian point, as it is called. And by the way, at the northern galactic center radian point, which is one of the most useful navigational reference points in the galaxy, there happens to be a millisecond pulsar. And not only is it a millisecond pulsar, it's actually the second fastest pulsing pulsar in the galaxy, measuring at 1.5578 milliseconds. To give you an idea of how fast that is, why don't we have a listen to a millisecond pulsar? At radio wavelengths, it is also the most luminous of all 130 known millisecond pulsars and the second brightest millisecond pulsar. In addition to that, it is one of only 14 pulsars known to emit giant pulses, and when it does so, it becomes the most luminous pulsar in the sky. And when it does emit a giant pulse, it burns at a temperature as high as 5 times 10 to the 39th power Kelvin, which is the brightest brightest temperature ever observed in the entire universe. It is also one of only five pulsars out of the 2,400 radio pulsars that have been detected that emit optical pulses as well as radio pulses. And it's also the only millisecond pulsar found to emit optical pulses. Such an incredibly useful object that just happens to be located at such an incredibly useful location. And again, quite a unique object in many different respects. And there are many other things about pulsars that scream techno signature, scream artificial influence of some kind. I'm not suggesting that aliens are building pulsars pulsars, but they might be tweaking them, modifying them to make them more useful, and moving them to more useful locations. And that's what this video is primarily about. How could alien civilizations actually relocate pulsars to more useful locations in the galaxy, not only for themselves, but for any civilization that wanted to try to navigate between the stars? Well, an astronomer named Clement Vidal thinks that he has has the answer. He had his paper published and peer-reviewed, by the way, in the Journal of the British Interplanetary Society just a few months ago. It's entitled, The Spider Stellar Engine, A Fully Steerable Extraterrestrial Design. And in this paper, he describes how pulsars could be mated with a low-mass companion star, and it utilizes that companion star to provide thrust. In other words, the pulsar is the vehicle and the companion star is the propellant for that vehicle. And the spider pulsar generates thrust by expelling propellant out of the gravitational system and the propellant is the matter stripped from the companion star. And the way it's able to do this is pulsars produce immensely powerful stellar winds, far more powerful than the solar wind generated by our sun, and this strips away any matter from any object that might be orbiting it, especially another star like a low mass star in this particular example. And as the matter is stripped away from the star, it vents away from the star in a desired direction, producing thrust in the process, just as a rocket engine would. The difference is, while the propellant from your average rocket leaves the nozzle at about 4.5 kilometers per second, this propellant would be traveling at a speed of 753 kilometers per second talking closing in on relativistic speeds and although we're talking about moving an enormous amount of mass so it would still take a considerable time to accelerate it it's still the most efficient way to move stars across the galaxy more efficient than other stellar engines that i've talked about on this channel such as a scott off thruster or a kaplan thruster 
So how do you steer this? I mean, yes, you can generate enormous amounts of thrust utilizing this type of system, but it seems a little improbable to try to steer it with any kind of precision. Well, there is a way to control both the yaw and pitch of this binary system by blasting the companion star with very potent pulsar winds only at certain points during its orbit. How would you do that? Well, we've already determined that pulsars can theoretically be agitated simply by, for example, smashing asteroids into them. If we were to time these sorts of events at the time that we want to generate the desired amount of thrust in the desired direction, then it would just be a matter of crashing an asteroid into the pulsar at this given time period, generating this burst of pulsar radiation and therefore for thrust from the companion star at the desired time and in the desired direction. Yeah, probably not an easy thing for a civilization like ours to do, but we can at least theorize a way of making it happen. So if this is indeed possible, have we actually seen any examples of something like this happening in the galaxy? I mean, all of this seems very far-fetched and it would be an incredible thing indeed to actually spot a pulsar in the process of being moved across the galaxy at high velocities. Have we actually seen something like this? Well, strangely enough, we have. First of all, the types of binaries that we've been talking about here, also known as spider pulsars, do indeed exist in the galaxy. If the companion star weighs less than 0.1 solar masses, that is to say less than 10% of the weight of our own sun, it's called a black widow pulsar. In other words, the pulsar has consumed almost the entire mass of the companion star. If it's between 0.1 and 0.7 solar masses, it's called a redback pulsar. So what we would look for is one of these types of pairings, one of these types of binaries traveling at a very high speed with an exhaust velocity that corresponds to the spider stellar engine. Is that something that we've actually observed in the universe? Well, strangely enough, Yes, we have. For example, the star PSR J1959 plus 2048 has an exhaust velocity from its companion star that averages somewhere around 668 kilometers per second and sometimes goes as high as 1,030 kilometers per second. Definitely fast enough to achieve escape velocity from the binary system and therefore provide thrust. But this same pulsar is doing something else that seems very strange and very odd if it were to be a coincidence and looks much more like something that's happening by design. In approximately four centuries, this pulsar is going to have a close encounter with another star, the star Gaia DR3. And incidentally, this collision, or rather this encounter, is going to take place at roughly the time that PSR J1959 plus 2048's companion star is running out of fuel. In other words, this pulsar is going to grab another star and fresh fuel in the process at about the time that its existing companion star runs out of fuel very strange coincidence indeed. Also, a detailed study of this pulsar indicated that its 3D motion appears to be nearly aligned with the spin axis of the millisecond pulsar. This is not something that should happen by chance, but this precise alignment allows the millisecond pulsar to blast its companion star with maximum force, producing the maximum possible thrust, and things get even spookier than that. In a four-year time period from 2019 to 2023, astronomers believe they may have observed a millisecond pulsar performing a stabilization maneuver. PSR J1311-3430 had a puzzling two-hour X-ray periodicity in a 1.5-hour orbital period. And here's the result 
result of what happened as a result of this periodicity. The face-on inclination of the pulses of this pulsar compared to its companion star occurred at point A, B, and C. In other words, the X-ray pulses split the orbital periodicity into three equal parts, providing exactly the same thrust in all three directions, creating the equivalent of a stabilization maneuver. An amazing coincidence that this should happen purely by chance, it looks a lot more like this was something that happened by design. And there's one more bizarre mystery associated with pulsar binaries that nobody seems to talk about very much, and that's the fact that the average transverse velocity is actually higher for Black Widow pulsars, in other words, pulsars that have consumed most of their companion stars as opposed to redbacks. This is not an easy thing to explain naturally from an astrophysical perspective. Natural pulsars could get most of their velocity from the supernova that created them, and they should continue to decelerate as they age. But instead, the opposite is true. And if it is some sort of stellar engine that's actually providing the velocity, Black Widows have much less propellant to carry and are therefore easier to accelerate and steer. Now, to be clear, Vidal is not arguing that we are definitely seeing the techno-signatures of stellar engines. He is instead arguing that we are seeing enough strange behavior that we need to start pursuing the idea of observing these systems in greater detail, because these would appear to perhaps be techno-signature candidates and definitely deserve greater examination because there's a very logical and practical reason that advanced interstellar civilizations would want to place pulsars at useful navigational points throughout the galaxy, and they may be in the process of doing that. Who knows? Perhaps a series of advanced civilizations over the last several million or even billions of years have been doing this, with a new civilization taking over when another civilization becomes extinct. And here's the spookiest thing of all. One of these Pulsar constellations appears to have been set up to get our attention in particular, or some civilization in our region of space. Is someone perhaps trying to tell us that one day it will be our responsibility to move Pulsars across the galaxy to help future civilizations navigate between the stars? Thanks very much for watching. I really appreciate your support, especially our latest Patreon members, and there's quite a number of them. We have Johnny F. and also Meet D, John Mysek, Ed Truckel, Ryan Crane, Tarcisio Santos, Free Flow, Little Seal, Oscar Jerkins, Devin323323, and finally, Jovian. Thank you very much for your support, and also for the folks who recently have supported us on PayPal as well. I could not keep this channel running without you, and if you'd like to join these folks and get access to my growing library of exclusive videos, we've got 13 titles now. We'll just head to the description where you can find all the details. And until next time, stay angry about space.